Hello and welcome to another episode of the Troy Francis podcast with me, Troy Francis, coming at you from London. It is Thursday the 15th of September and this is the show where we discuss dating, the dating marketplace, the vicissitudes of the dating marketplace, game, dating strategies and all of that good stuff really and a bit of anything else that comes up and we've gone through quite a few different topics on this podcast and yeah I'm hoping that this one is going to be another world-class effort that's going to be really useful for you because we're going to be talking about respect r-e-s-p-e-c-t and how respect in terms of relationships and dating is really key it's really a non-negotiable to be honest it's something that you need to to have and if you don't have it then you are going to run into difficulties in your dating life, in your dating journey, and it's not a good place to be. So you've got to have respect, which I know sounds a bit like one of those cheesy cosmopolitan magazine type bits of advice, but in this case, it's really, really true. You need to have that element of respect. So look, anyway, 15th of September, halfway through September, incredibly, we are fast approaching the final quarter of what's been a, well pretty dismal year in many ways but in many other ways it's been a good year as well I hope you feel that I hope that you can see some sort of you know positivity that's come out of all of this craziness that is happening around us and um, you know you've been managing to at least achieve some of the things that you want to achieve regardless of the difficulties that have been going on I know that I certainly have and I'm not saying that to blow my own trumpet or anything like that but it's just you know sometimes you've just got to accept things as they are think right I'm just going to get on with it anyway regardless and push forward and you know that's what I've done and it's it's been okay frustrating at times but it's been okay but anyway enough of these senseless ramblings let's get into the topic at hand so I wanted to talk about respect now this is something that I have touched upon on this channel before because it is very very important but it's something that I want to just pay a bit more attention to today and as is often the case The reason that I'm talking about this particular subject area today is because I saw a post on Reddit that really brought it home to me how important respect actually is for all of us really entering into relationships, but certainly for guys entering into relationships. And I think what this story illustrates is how important it is to be aware of when other people are impinging on your frame and doing things that are, even if covertly, disrespectful to you. Because, to be frank, you don't deserve that kind of nonsense. And if you feel that it's being directed towards you, then you do need to consider your position. That is to say, you need to think, well, do I actually want to be in this relationship with this person who's going to treat me like this or not. Because what tends to happen in my experience is that people will push at you and they'll push at you and push at you and they will see what they can get away with. And if they can get away with something, then they're going to push more and next time they're going to seek to get away with even more. And so you're in a an unwinnable war, really, in the sense that it's a bit like the old thing about hostages and the government saying we don't negotiate with hostages. And the reason that they do that is because whatever demands the hostages make, if you give in to those demands sorry, not the hostages, the hostage takers, whatever demands those hostage takers make, if you accede to those demands, then the likelihood is that those hostage takers or kidnappers or whatever are simply going to be emboldened and they are going to want even further concessions from you. And so, again, you're in this catch-22 situation where nothing you can do is, is going to satisfy their insatiable demands and the same thing unfortunately I believe is true in some relationships in some toxic relationship situations not all I'm not trying to paint everyone by the same brush or any of that stuff but certainly this is a phenomenon that I've observed in my own life and I've seen it in the lives of other people around me and it's a very unfortunate thing 
But as I say, basically, if somebody starts to push your boundaries, you need to be alive to that. You need to be awake and you need to recognize that it's happening. And then you need to think about how you're going to uh, tackle the issue going forward. Because if you don't do anything, there's a danger that they're just going to keep going, keep chipping away. Uh, until in the end you've made more concessions than than you wanted to, or you've just been humiliated or just hurt in some other way. But anyway, this is all a little bit abstract. So what I will do now is read you the post that I saw on Reddit, and then we will discuss it afterwards. So this was on the relationship advice Reddit, and a guy who is 22 apparently says, and the, the, the title is My Girlfriend, 20 Female, told me that she's attracted to my brother, 26 male. So this guy's 22, and his girlfriend's told him that she is attracted to his brother. <clears throat> okay, so here's the story. So my girlfriend and I have been together for almost two years now, and she's the only girl I've ever dated, and I love her so much, but she can be really insensitive sometimes, and I'm starting to think I might not be able to get over this one. So here's what happens. So we were laying in bed talking about fantasies and stuff, and she started telling me about how she's always had this fantasy of being dominated by, like, a really muscular, tall guy. At first, I didn't care. I was laughing about it and saying, well, sorry, I can't help you with that unless you're willing to give me a few years to hit the gym and see if I can pull it off. It didn't matter to me because it was just a fantasy, and it's not like I don't have any fantasies. But she says, well, you can never be that. I'm talking about someone like your brother. My brother is like 6.5, uh, 6 foot 5, former defensive lineman. When she said that, I told her, excuse me, what's that supposed to mean? She said, oh, no, I meant like body type wise. That's the body type I'm attracted to. So I told her, you're saying you're more attracted to my brother than you are to me. She said, well, yeah, but just physical attraction. You can't get mad at me for having a type. Obviously, I was livid when I heard that, but I didn't want to seem petty, so I ended that conversation. Keep in mind that I'm not short. I'm six foot one, and I'm definitely not muscular, but I'm not too skinny either. So now my best friend thinks it's disrespectful and that I should break up with her. To be honest, my self-esteem has taken a big hit, but is this really a good reason to break up with someone? Should I bring it up with her again and tell her how offended I am or just let it go? And then he goes into, he does a couple of edits. And in the first edit, he says, because he's received some replies on the Reddit uh, page, he says, listen, loads and loads of comments. Uh, I don't really have a problem with her being attracted to a different body type. I'm attracted to a different body type than hers too. And I also don't have any problems with her fantasy being that she wanted to be dominated by said body type. I've got my own fantasies. My problem is with her saying that it's my brother. Okay. Um, and then the second one is, he says, uh, after reading some comments, it seems this will lead to her cheating with the brother. Honestly, I don't see that happening because she really hates cheaters. And even if she wanted to do it, there's just no chance in hell my brother does that. Uh, and then he does a TLDR. My girlfriend told me she's more attracted to my brother than she is to me. I can't get over it, and I don't know how to react now. Well, okay, what do you think about that? That's a bit of a tangled web, isn't it? I mean, like, whenever I read something like this, and you get these kinds of stories a lot on things like Reddit and so on, it, it just makes my heart sink, really, because in any sane view of this situation, she is out of order, we say in the UK, she she's out of order, out of order, uh, to to say that. I mean, that's just you know to say to somebody, this poor guy. Well, yeah, you know, I kind of fancy your brother more than you, but it's only physical. You know, I just want to be dominated by his tall, muscular, alpha body. But you know, I I like you in other ways, babe. That is just completely disrespectful of his feelings that is just completely callous really when you think about it in terms of the way that you know and he's been with her two years he says he really loves her she's the only girl that he's he's had and all this kind of thing so I find it really really worrying that a woman can come out with something like that in the full knowledge of how it's likely to make him feel now, 
you know, in terms of what's going to happen or transpire as a result of this, he says in his edit, I think it's unlikely that she's going to cheat with the brother or whatever. And, um, yeah, that may well be true. I mean, obviously, we don't know all of the circumstances, but I think some of these commentators underneath the OP were maybe jumping the gun a little bit, saying, oh, she's probably going to cheat with the brother, blah, blah, blah. That's not necessarily the case. You know, that's not necessarily going to happen, and, you know, who knows. Um, but let's assume he's right. Let's assume she's that's very unlikely to happen because she wouldn't do it and, and he would, wouldn't do it either. That still doesn't take away from the gravity of what has happened. And there's a real fundamental problem here, isn't there, about the efficacy of monogamous relationships anyway, you know, and the pretty lies perhaps that we tell ourselves about the relationships that we enter into. Because somebody else could look at this or they could listen to this podcast and what I'm saying and they might say, well, no, they were having a full and frank and open conversation about their desires, their fantasies, whatever. And she was just being truthful about the fact that that's what she likes. That's what she's into. She's into muscular, dominant guys. And this man's brother fits the bill. And so she used him as an example. And so what's wrong with that? You know, she's only telling the truth. She's only just being upfront about her... um, natural desires and you know you could say well good honor you know she she had the, the, the courage to be to be honest and to come out with it which is one way of looking at it but listen the problem is that a relationship is in many ways a sort of a shared fantasy that is kept afloat by the consent of both of the parties within it because The truth of the matter is that, and he acknowledges this himself, the OP acknowledges the fact that he has his own fantasies and maybe he fantasizes about women who have different body types to her and everything. And yeah, I mean, sure, this happens. But in order to maintain a monogamous relationship and in order to for it to operate in the way that we want it to operate in the West, which is kind of shoehorned, we're shoehorning human nature into a space that is maybe slightly uncomfortable for it to reside in. It relies on the maintenance of this shared fantasy between the two protagonists, okay? So if you are a husband and wife, it's not really acceptable for the husband to walk in and say to the wife one evening, do you know what? You look a little bit fat. I've really been fantasizing about having sex with our slim and nubile uh, next door neighbor over the last couple of days. I'm just being honest. I'm just telling you how I feel. You know, rightly, that would be seen to be very hurtful and very damaging, even though the guy might just be telling the truth, even though the guy might just be uh, expressing the way that he, he genuinely feels. And of course, the problem with all of this, the pretty lie that it exposes beneath the, the veneer of polite society that we all like to try and maintain is that, in fact, partners within relationships are attracted to other people. She probably is attracted to, well, she is attracted to his brother. You know, she's probably fantasized about having sex with him and so on and so forth. And that might be a reality. But it's just, if you want to be in a committed monogamous relationship, it's just not a reality that it is um, respectful to articulate to your partner. And she knows this. She knows this damn well. You know, it's all very well to say, yeah, but I'm just being honest. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just being in touch with my feelings and my true nature and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great, but... You know, it goes against the very core tenets of a monogamous relationship of this kind. Now, pulling the camera back a little bit and taking a more a look at this from more from a distance, as I say, the bigger problem here might be: Well, do monogamous relationships like this actually really work anyway? And you will probably have certain feelings on that depending on your life experiences and where you're coming from and you know all the rest of it and some people are, you know are going to say absolutely they they do 100% work and other people are going to say no it's a it's a construct it goes against human nature and everything else but 
this problem that these this guy's written in about to Reddit exposes it really because because but the fundamental thing is now well what does he do now you know because okay she's been honest okay she has owned her truth or however you want to say it in a kind of new agey way <clears throat> but in doing so she has expressed something that is that really goes against his position in that relationship you know because like the guy in a relationship wants to feel like he is wanted he wants to feel like he is her best option um, sexually as well as in other ways you know that's how he wants to feel and a, a woman would want to feel that as well you know a woman also wants to feel like she is the best option that this guy has now as i say in reality that might not be entirely true, you know? In reality, perhaps she has got better options than this dude. Perhaps the brother just is a bit more of a chad and, you know, maybe any woman in her right mind would rather be with the brother. But the fact is she isn't. She's with the, the OP. Uh, and in stating this preference, she has undermined something very, very significant within the relationship. Now, the only time that this, I think, is acceptable is if you are in some sort of a polyamorous-type setup, I suppose. And that is never something that I would recommend. You know, that's an anathema to me. That's not something that I'm interested in or would ever promote. But, I mean, if I suppose if you're in the confines of something very open, then maybe this is the kind of thing that you you talk about and you can admit to these kinds of things. But I think in, in general, the model that we are still trying to work to in the West for relationships, you know, you just can't be going around saying this kind of stuff, you know. So as I say, I mean, this betrays a big problem, really, with relationships and the naturalness of them, the fact that actually people do look around, people do have these other preferences and things. Um, but as I say, stating them is dangerous to the foundation of that relationship. And as he says himself, you know, he's he's basically saying, I don't know if I can let this one go. I don't know if I can live with this because what she said is so hurtful to him. It's so fundamentally damaging to his self-image, his image of himself with her and everything else that it's really, really problematic. Now, of course, what will probably happen is he will probably just let it go. Because he's probably, you know, madly in love with her. He has one itis, you know, blah, whatever, whatever you want to call it. You know, he loves her and he will find a way to let this go and he'll live with it. But the difficulty is he's going to fester, you know, and every time they're at a family event and she's talking to the brother and they're having a bit of a laugh and a giggle or whatever, it's going to come back to him and it's going to haunt him. And he's going to think, God, you know, I wonder if they're flirting. I wonder what she's thinking. I wonder if anything has happened or if anything ever could happen or all of these things. And of course, because it's his brother, a family member, that's even worse because, you know, you don't want this kind of thing to then get into the family and start to, uh, you know, cause rifts there either. So has she done a terrible, terrible, wicked, evil thing? I mean, on the one hand, no, because as I say, all she's done really, and look, they were in a conversation talking about their fantasies, and he invited this conversation, I think. Um, well, he, he just says, we were lying in bed talking about fantasies and stuff, and she started telling me about how she's always had this fancy of being dominated by a really muscular, tall guy. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know whether he started that conversation or not. But they were chatting about fantasy, so she, she's just put forward a fantasy. Uh, I mean, for a start, I would want to know, why would you be entertaining... As the boyfriend, why would you be entertaining this um, line of conversation in the first place? Because if you are a guy who has his stuff together and who is confident in his own value... It seems to me to betray some degree of weakness to then say to your partner, well, aside from me, what else do you fantasize about? Because the assumption should be that you are the only thing that she fantasizes about because you are so fantastically awesome. Now, of course, in reality, is that going to be the case? No, probably not. But 
is a really is Giga Chad, as some of our um, friends in other corners of the internet like to call them. If, if you imagine the ultimate Giga Chad, who is like the ultimate kind of Jason Statham, Daniel Craig, action man, Chad kind of guy. Is he going to be sitting there thinking, hmm, I wonder what my girlfriend fantasizes about other than me? Well, no, obviously he's not, because in his mind and in his reality, he is the ultimate prize, okay? So even entertaining this conversation, I would say, is a little bit dorky because you are signaling to her that you regard it as possible that you are not fulfilling all of her fantasies. And as I say, again, in reality... That's probably the case for, for, for any of us. But it's not something that you really want to acknowledge because in acknowledging it, you display your weakness and that is not a good place to be. So, I mean, for a start, I wouldn't even be having this conversation because, you know, it, it lays you open to the possibility of something damaging coming out, which, of course, is what happens in this situation. And then she says... I've always had this fantasy of being dominated by, like, a really muscular, tall guy. And, I mean, that is a bit of a blow to the heart in itself, isn't it, really? I mean, and he is quite tall. He's 6'1". Um, I assume he's not... He, well, he says he's not muscular. Maybe he's quite skinny or whatever. But it's a bit like, well, well, hang on a minute. So what? So what are you saying? So you're saying that the sexual spark that exists between us is not really good enough because actually what you want is something different, some, somebody else something else and then he kind of tries to laugh it off and he's sort of like well you know give me a few years i'll go down the gym let's see and, and that again is is a mistake i would say his reaction to that making a joke about it and saying he'll hit the gym is a mistake i mean of course i have to say for all the lifting bros listening you know you should be lifting anyway heavy weights um, he should be down the gym after his cold showers and uh, bare knuckle press-ups and black coffee he should be in the gym every morning lifting anyway uh, so this conversation, you know, that conversational avenue shouldn't have presented itself. But even putting that to one side, you know, to then sort of buy into her frame and make a joke about it and sort of say, because he's kind of saying, and it's a bit chody, isn't it? He's kind of saying, oh, yeah, ha, ha, you're right. Actually, I am a bit of a weakling. Ha, ha. Well, maybe I can do something about it, but it's going to take a few years because I'm such a weakling. It's almost self-deprecation, and that, as I've said before, is a bad thing. You know, like, it's better, if you are a skinny, rake kind of like guy, better to just own that and be like, well, sorry, I don't want to be some roidhead, meathead idiot like Jersey Shore. What the hell do you think I am? You know? Like, it's almost better to own exactly whatever you happen to be rather than fall into the frame of, even jokingly, to fall into that frame of like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I could change, but uh, it's going to take a lot of time. <laughs> you know, I mean, as I say, ideally you want to be doing some, uh, you want to be doing some weight training anyway. You want to be doing some lifting anyway. But, you know, there are also dudes who are skinny, who like kind of rock and roll type guys, who are, who are bloody cool, you know. And they get loads and loads of female attention. And, you know... If you want to buy into that archetype, you don't... And, I, and this is a mistake I've made in the past myself. But if you want to buy into that archetype, more like the skinny rock and roll kind of guy who doesn't give a damn, those guys still get girls. Those guys are still sexually attractive to women, to some women, you know, just to whatever. You know, women... There are different categories of what women find attractive. And, you know, that guy shouldn't then be saying, oh, you're right, actually, I should, like, get jacked. He should be like, no, sod you. I don't care what you think. This is, I am cool the way I am. So, you know, that's, that's the next thing. Um, and so, and then I think she then drops in the thing about uh, the brother, you know. And he's sort of saying, well, I don't care because, you know, it was just a fantasy and I have fantasies. Well, yeah, but then you are writing into Reddit about it. So you obviously care a bit. Um and then she says, I'm talking about someone like your brother. I mean, Jesus. I mean, what was she thinking to say that? You know, I mean, and again, even if this is true, this is, I'm, I'm sure it is true, you know, like, this is where the disrespect lies, really. Because, sure, this, that might be how she genuinely feels and whatever, you know, like, she can't, that's just how she feels. That, you can't blame her for that. That's fine. But she knows damn well, 
how this is going to make this guy feel. And yet she's quite happy just to verbalise it anyway. And that is, I think, where the disrespect lies. It's not so much the fact that she feels this way or whatever. I mean, all of that is, you know, people, people just feel how they feel. You know, you can't change that. But the fact that she's so callous to just drop it in like this, and what it betrays, I think, is, is her knowledge that this dude is not going to push back, okay? And that is a problem. Because if she was going out with somebody who was a bit of a bad boy, and say he was really skinny, and say he wasn't that tall and whatever, but he was just a bad boy, and he was like, listen, it's my way or the highway, she wouldn't try to pull this kind of thing, right? You know, she's trying to pull it because she knows that she can get away with it. And, of course, the trouble now is that as he accedes to this, or if he accedes to this, what's going to happen? Now, as we said before, it doesn't seem likely perhaps that, you know, she was going to have an affair with the brother or anything like that. I mean, let's not overthink this thing, you know. And he lets it go, and, you know, I'm sure that she's into him, and she'll probably be quite happy and everything on the surface. But you've always got to think about, what have I conceded here? You know, this is like a negotiation or it's like a deal. And it's like, what have I given away here? And if, in a sense, he has... In a sense, what he's doing, if he continues on the relationship with her, he will be giving away a portion of his dignity in order to continue to be with her. And so you can't prevent her then from taking the message that, well, I can get away with stuff with this guy. I can get away with, you know, pushing his buttons and actually saying something that's quite hurtful to him, you know, because he's just going to wear it. He's just going to accept it. So, you know, like, you're not... If they continue with the relationship and patch this up and then just go forward then it's not like things are going to go disastrous from day one. I mean, maybe it'll be okay, but underlying is always that knowledge that he has let something go that's pretty significant, and I think she knows it's pretty significant. There were a lot of guys in the comments who were saying things like, well, what if you said to her, I'd like to go with your sister who has, you know, larger breasts and all the rest of it than, than you? I mean, of course, she would be absolutely appalled by that and would probably dump him. So the fact that he doesn't do the same thing is not sending out a message of strength to her in any way. And that, I think, is where he needs to be cautious on this. So I would say, really, that within a relationship, respect is is absolutely necessary. It's non-negotiable. I'm not saying that you're walking around like a mini-dictator and picking up the other person on things all the time, but it's kind of like you've got to be vigilant about when you're frame is being attacked or chipped away at or eroded and you've got to be alive to that and you've got to be prepared to take action people will always try and get away with things not all people some people are very nice some people don't do this some people do it more than others some people do it sometimes and not all the time but in general you can be sure that people will try and do this to you at different times in your life and you have to be as i say aware of it and you have to be prepared to put up boundaries. And sometimes that means removing yourself from a situation because if you let people get away with even something relatively small, then where's it going to go down the line? And you've already set a precedent for letting things go. So that doesn't put you in a strong position. And it doesn't, it's certainly not going to increase their respect for you you know if this guy lets this go it's not going to increase his girl's respect for him one iota in fact it's only going to do the opposite so got to be careful when things like this happen take them seriously it's not just oh it was just a joke or it's just a silly comment or blah 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 i mean in my experience in relationships when a girl says something to you and it jars and it comes out the blue and it just kind of it's just kind of like whoa where did that come from there's a good chance you're in pretty stormy territory, okay? Because most of the time, and this is maybe slightly contradicting what I just said about people chipping away, but a lot of the time people will endeavor to be relatively nice, you know, particularly with someone they're going out with and stuff. You know, they will try to sort of soften, soften the corners over of some of the realities of things. 
when they're getting a bit more fed up with the relationship or fed up with the status quo and they kind of don't care as much, then they may start to do things which begin to jar a bit. And if that begins to happen, you've got to be careful because there's a chance that your days could be numbered anyway. So you need to assess the situation and decide really what you're going to do for your own self-protection and your own sanity, frankly. So anyway, look, that's it. That's enough of that uh, for today. Thought I would talk a little bit about respect because it is important. Do follow me or rather subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button, hit the notifications bell. Really, really helps me because it it gives a kickstart to the, uh, the algorithm over on YouTube. Uh, and that's really helpful for me in terms of building up the audience and all the rest of it, putting out this free content. Uh, if you would like to be in touch with me on a regular basis, then get onto my free daily email list. There's a link in the description below. And if you want to read more of my stuff about dating and the dating marketplace, then grab Renegade Dating Blueprint. It's only $39. It's a collection of 11 books about all of this kind of stuff that we've been talking about today and more. And it's available on the link below. All right, I'll leave it there for now. Bye-bye.